Man, this thing sucks. Oh, hello there. How are y'all doing? Hello everyone, Mr. Daydream here, and I'm so happy today because I finally got a hundred subscribers. I know what y'all are thinking, where are you? I'm in some public restroom in the middle of the park in the middle of the night, and uh, yeah, it's not exactly pretty. But since I finally reached a hundred subscribers and I stumbled upon this place, I just thought to myself, eh, why don't I just make the video here? Though I don't know if it's a good idea because as you can tell, the lighting in here is very limited. But anyways, I'm just so happy that I finally got 100 subscribers. It took me over a year and a half, but I finally got it. The lesson here is remain persistent if you want to achieve your goals. And while I'm here, I might as well talk about some updates as well. In my previous update video, y'all probably remembered how I mentioned about the, uh, popular channels. I just really hated that thing because these people are already well known and it's like, do they really need any more promotion, especially if it's on a channel that's practically unknown? There's this other thing called the related channels, which I prefer much, much better. But it's kind of weird how the whole YouTube thing works out. Sometimes you'll have the popular channels and then sometimes you'll have the related channels. It just goes back and forth. So. I don't know, it's just, uh, uh, But I do think the related channels is a good idea because if you would like more similar content to a certain YouTuber, then you can check out the related channels and you can get similar uh, things out of it. But does it really work that well? Because I, the one I have, half the time it seems to be quite pleasable, but the other times, it's just random. Like the first one we have here is Grade A Under A, which makes perfect sense. I mean, he's also a rant channel and, you know, just talk about things and frustrations, so that one makes sense. Then there's H3H3 Productions, which, yeah, definitely works because that channel also talks about things that are going on or certain things that are unfair or, they, you know, they point them out and bring attention to it, so yeah, that makes sense. But the rest doesn't make sense. Like here we have Dragon Smash, which is a YouTube channel that posts compilation videos of Smash 4 moments. It's a really good channel, but what does that have to do with my channel? My channel has nothing to do with Smash Brothers. I mean, I've been watching a lot of his videos, but does YouTube think that because I watch a lot of his videos, that must mean that they have something to do with my channel? Then we have Game Chops, which is a channel that has a lot of uh, video game music remixes. The weird thing about this one is that I barely watched any of the videos. I mean, there are a few I did watch, but not as much as Dragon Smash. So why is it in the related channels? And then we have, and then we have Amazing Gaming Music. It's like, what does that have to do with my channel? It's like... Like, I think YouTube generally puts channels that has something to do with your channel. Then they put some channels that you watch most of, and then a bunch of other random channels that they think has something to do with your channels. I think. So it's really weird, but I really prefer this one over the uh, popular channels any day. Because I was getting tired of the Paul Brothers. They're everywhere on YouTube. You can't even be safe on your own channel because they're just right there on the side just laughing at my face. But I'm just glad I don't have to see them again. I hope. <laughs> The next thing I want to talk about is the demonetization on YouTube channels. As y'all probably know, on February the 20th, a lot of the smaller YouTube channels were affected to where they were no longer eligible to monetize their videos. And I know what some of y'all might be thinking. How does this affect me? Well, it never affected me at all to begin with. I haven't monetized any of my videos ever since I started this show, mostly because I don't think I'm at that uh, right point to do so. Because I'm not that well known yet, but uh, once I have a uh, large audience, then that's a perfect time to do it. I mean, that was the intention I had ever since I started this show, but uh, now with this new YouTube policy, I guess the only time I can monetize my videos is if uh, my views hit a certain criteria and then YouTube sends me a message saying, Oh, hey, guess what? You are now allowed to monetize your videos. So yeah, that's uh, uh, basically what that is about. So I basically just have to keep making videos and I just have to treat YouTube as a hobby. And once I can get videos monetized and I can make a living out of this, then I'll start doing videos full time and then I can treat this as a job. It's just that th these videos take a lot of time to make. I mean, I have to like shoot the scenes. I have to do a lot of editing and then I do the little animations. So yeah, it's not as easy as some of y'all might think. I am going to put more videos out, including an animated short film, which I'm hoping I can release next month. 
but uh, you know, we'll just have to see because it is quite an ambitious project. I've been working on it for quite some time. Uh, it's been going through a lot of redesigns and stuff, but it's looking really good and uh, I'm hoping I can get that done. But anyways, let's look at some comments. One of the things I'm really glad for right now is that I'm actually getting more comments than I used to get. Which is a good thing because I can finally get some feedback and I can see whether or not people like the show or if there's anything that can be improved on. So yeah, those are the kinds of comments I uh, yeah, will always look forward to getting and uh, yeah, I'm finally getting them. Like one of, the, one of the comments I got in my previous video was, uh, were you able to monetize this? I wasn't going to do it until I had a larger audience, which the, uh, the person responded with, uh, what do I consider a larger audience? And Well, to me, I would say if it's around in the thousand range, because that shows that there is an audience for this type of show. But I'm not too worried about that. I mean, I have a feeling that I will get there someday. There's this other comment that says, Man, what do you think about background music? Like, is he addressing me as man, or is he sounding annoyed? Like, man, what do you think about background music? Man, what do I look like? Happy birthday to the ground! I probably shouldn't have done that. Oh. Oh, man, this... <laughs> Somebody mopped the floors and this thing got all wet. <laughs> but anyways, the interesting thing about this question is that when I was experimenting with this show, I did originally want to include background music and uh, there were a bunch of them that did have it. But I decided to get rid of them because I felt like they were a bit too distracting from what was being said. That and you had to constantly credit a bunch of people, most notably Kevin McLeod. So I decided to only play music for the opening, the transitions, and the credits, as well as some certain scenes. Like that one horror music I used in that one scene in the Fidget Spinner video. If you haven't seen it, I would appreciate it if you checked it out because it's just one of those things I'm extremely proud of, like, yeah, I was just so happy how well I pulled it off, and, uh, but yeah, it hasn't gotten as much views as some of the other videos, but, eh, you know, I s still get views, and that's all that really matters, you know, as long as you get some form of attention. Then there's this other one, which sounds a bit like a complaint. Why haven't you been uploading? I love the animations, though. One thing I would really like to get into. Now, the weird thing about this comment is that it was posted two weeks after I made that video. That one video about large subscriber counts. Now, I think what he's getting at is, why haven't I been uploading more videos? Well, it's like what I said earlier. These videos take uh, time to make. I mean, I would love to put more videos out, but I can't be posting a video every single day. It would be at least every two weeks that I can put a new video. I mean, I think the state that YouTube is in, uh, people have gotten a bit spoiled sometimes because uh, you have a bunch of channels where they can just upload a video every single day, like gaming channels and vlogging channels. So, yeah, it's just... It's a bit unfortunate how there are channels that put a lot of effort into their videos and uh, you just have all these people that just uh, want more of it. And, you know, it's always nice to have people wanting to see more of what you can do, but it's just, there's just a limit at how fast you can do these things. Like, quality takes time. Now, I'm not saying that all these gaming channels and vlogging channels are garbage or anything. The whole process of making the videos are completely different if you were to compare to, say, a vlogging channel to an animation channel. I mean, it's just not fair to tell an animation channel, hey, why don't you put as much videos as this vlogging channel? He puts out a video every single day. You put out a video every month. What gives? But the nice thing is that there are a large number of YouTube users that are patient when it comes to uh, videos. So that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you for watching it. I just wanted to catch up on some updates and some other things that have been going on and uh, yeah, just clarify them a bit. So thank you very much for 100 subscribers. It really means a lot to me. I mean, it may seem like a small number, but as long as it achieves something, then that's all that matters. Bye y'all and take care. I'm just surprised nobody came in this whole time.